All right. It's great to see you all here this evening. Thanks for coming. And uh, I am going to start my screen share, which is tonight's presentation is the five second elevator pitch because nobody wants to listen to you talk about yourself for 30 seconds. I think um, uh, for years now, uh, it's been a common um, reference in, in job search circles to speak about the 30 second elevator pitch as if you had 30 seconds riding up in an elevator to the executive floor with an executive to pitch your value and your point and purpose. And to be honest, nobody has that much time in, in these days in COVID, you're probably not going to be in an elevator with anyone anyways. So um, the point being is, is how can we compress this down to meet, be business relevant and impactful without having to take somebody's uh, attention away for 30 seconds, right? We can either capture their attention or forego and bypass if it doesn't resonate. So where this comes from, this structure comes from is, and actually you'll see it as we go through this, it comes from marketing. Uh, and particularly this is referred to as a marketing hook. And so the whole point of it is, is to hook somebody with a relevant message that you then earn the right to and get permission to speak longer about in a, in a, whether it's uh, right there at the meeting or maybe inviting them to coffee. But the point being is, is if they're not resonating in your first five seconds, then you've been clear enough and logical enough and relevant enough that they've decided that they don't need what you're offering. And that's a valid response. You both get to move on to something different. So let me uh, advance this here. All right, hang on. So th the problem is. Hey, hey Alan. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm not seeing any slides. I'm just seeing, I think the others. No? Okay, all right, thanks for the, thanks for the clue. And let me uh, stop and reinitialize initialize the share. But it was a very pretty background. <laughs> is this better? Yeah, that looks more like All a right. slide. It's not as attractive as the, the flower thing that you had. Well, okay, then let me go back and show you my <laughs> fancy- uh, There uh, we go. Fancy graphics for the five second elevator pitch. Um, this is brought to you by PowerPoint. I did not do any of this. So <laughs> it's very compelling. I have no idea though, never been there. So the problem as I was saying is, is a 30 second elevator pitch is rambling, it, it's untargeted, it's often irrelevant to the audience. And at some level it's disrespectful of their time, attention and interests. And that's the last thing we wanna be in job search mode, right? Is we wanna be disrespectful of another person's time and attention. So, what are those steps to a compelling five seconds? Research, in other words, research their needs, research the industry needs, research the, the uh, needs of the profession, and that's easy to do. Listen, listen to the, the person that you're across from and listen to their needs, get them engaged in a conversation talking about them and their needs. And then that allows you to craft a message that's resonant and relevant to what their challenges are. And then their response is gonna be one of two, and we'll cover this, positive or negative or pro or not. And either is honest and it's appropriate. It's, a, it's an honest response because they've gotten a message that's crafted to their needs. And then if, if it's positive, then there's the follow-up. And so that's the format that we're gonna go through tonight. So when to use this, networking events, it works in interviews. Anytime somebody says, tell me about yourself right? This is a five second uh, structure that allows you to speak to the needs that you've researched. So it starts days before, right? Doing that research on the top challenge of the profession, the industry, the company, and what are their top solutions, right? Because most often any, any industry article or any trade group is going to specify the challenges for the upcoming year, and what they see as the top solutions. So you can find that in industry trade groups or annual conference, keynote speeches, industry surveys, and do not neglect your local librarian. 
reaching out to the reference desk and asking them how you would find out this information is like a wonderful question you could ask that person. They love to do the research. So that's the research. That's how you find out what the problem is and what they see as the top solutions. Then when you're engaged in the day of the event or at that moment, you qualify them, right? Listen to them and their needs. Let them tell you about their problems first. And then identify if those match your skills and passion, right? So one of the things that I like to kind of tongue in cheek mention is somebody will say, hi, who are you? What do you do? I'm Alan. What do you do? I immediately put it back on them and, and they'll take it. They will tell you. And then you can follow up with in tongue in cheek, right? That must be a perfect job with no worries whatsoever or any challenges or problems. Well, of course, every job has challenges and problems, right? Engage them in a conversation. Tell me more about that. And then what happened? And then what next? And what are the solutions? You're going to be probably the only person showing that much level of interest in that person that day. And that speaks volumes about the respect that you bring to someone else. So crafting a compelling message, this is a format or a template that you can use as long as you've done your research ahead of time to craft a message in the moment that's compelling enough for them to respond to. So when they finally do get back around to saying, who are you and what do you do again, right? You might wanna have researched the top three problems for the top industries of your top 10 companies and know the results that you've created. And so as you can see in the template here is, I solve XYZ problem for such and such an industry like I did for my last company where we improved this result. So what this might look like for me is, I solve the challenge of engineers so client server engineers staying up all night fixing problems for retail industry like I did for Best Buy, where we were able to take uh, support transformation within one week and we improved server uptime by 100%. Now, if I've been talking to somebody at an IT conference or at an IT trade group and they have that problem, they're gonna to listen to me. They're gonna say one thing, tell me more. Or they might say, that's interesting, did you see the weather? And the point of it is, is because my message has been crafted specifically for that person, it's an honest response. If they don't have that issue, ah, did you see the weather? Great, they just told me they're not interested in what I'm, what I'm selling which is fine because now I can politely excuse myself from that engagement and say, you know what, it's been interesting talking to you. Have a great day. And I can go find somebody else at the event that might be more resonating with my message. And although I didn't put it in here, you can also in a professional networking event, follow up and say, do you know anybody who might have that interest or that need? Would you be willing to introduce me? And then that leads to the follow-up, which is what, um, if, if they invite you to discuss it further, right? Then we can start getting into details. Um, tell me more about your specific industry. Tell me about the top challenge. Um, here's how my skills fit that. Would you like to go get coffee or would you like to uh, sit down and talk more or should we book a time? And notice the options were sit down now or book a time. Not, would you like to talk about it or not? Because that's already been covered previously. They are interested. They said, tell me more. All right. The only question now is, when would you like to talk more? And the point of what this does is, rather than a 30-second ramble, this is a focus on a challenge that they're having that's engaged and, and um, relevant to what their needs are. And this can lead into finding uh, problems that they need to craft job posting for you. So now we've reached the uh, Q&A portion. I'm gonna pause the recording and stop sharing.
And I'll invite uh, QA at this point. 